thread the machine, the first thing we need to do is wind a bobbin. And to wind a bobbin, we need to retrieve the bobbin. So take off the removable storage compartment and open up this door and put your finger behind this latch on the bobbin holder and pull it toward you and hold the latch with two fingers and pull the whole thing out. Tilt it to release the bobbin from the bobbin holder. Your machine uses Singer Class 15 transparent bobbins, so if you want to buy more bobbins later on, Make sure that they're Singer Class 15 transparent bobbins. Next, place your thread spool on your spool pin. Set your spool cap in place on top of that. Your threading path for the bobbin is indicated on the top of the machine with a dashed line in a sort of teal green color. So we're gonna follow that threading path. So first, hold your thread with two hands and snap it first into this thread guide like it shows here on your diagram and then bring it around your bobbin winding tension disc, making sure that the thread fits snugly under the disc. Take the loose end of your thread and place it from the center out through one of the holes of your bobbin. And then set the bobbin on your bobbin winding spindle and push it all the way down. And continue holding the thread above the bobbin as you push the bobbin to the right. Step on the foot control to start winding. You can stop to trim the thread tail close to the bobbin, and then step on the foot control again to resume winding. You can stop winding any time that you feel like you have enough thread on your bobbin for your project or you can continue winding until the bobbin is full. It will stop automatically when it's full. When the bobbin is full, push it to the left and then lift it off the bobbin winding spindle and cut the thread. Now that we've wound a bobbin, we're ready to insert the bobbin. Place your bobbin into your bobbin holder like this and to check that you've done it correctly, pull the thread toward you to make sure that the bobbin is turning clockwise. If it's turning counterclockwise, that's actually incorrect and you'll need to take it out and put it in again and make sure that it's turning clockwise. That's very important. Now, place the thread into this slit on the side of the bobbin holder and bring it under this metal tab and pull on it until you feel it and hear it click in place between these two metal arms underneath the metal tab. Hold the latch, and with this finger pointing up, bring the bobbin holder to the machine until it sits in place and release the latch. Now that we've wound a bobbin and inserted it into the machine, we're ready to thread the top of the machine. And there are two things you need to do before you do anything at the top of the machine with the thread, and that is to first raise the presser foot lifter very important. And then turn the hand wheel toward you so that the needle is raised up and that you see the thread take-up lever come up here so that it's completely visible. After winding a bobbin, the top of the machine may look something like this. So we want to remove the thread from the bobbin winding threading path. And we're going to follow instead now the needle threading path, which is marked by this gray solid line. So hold your thread with your right hand with the loose end in your left hand and snap your thread into this guide like it shows you here, number one, and then bring it into the second thread guide here between those two small plates and bring it down through this channel, down around the U-turn, and bring it back up to the right of the take-up lever and then bring it to the left and forward again so that the, the eye of the take-up lever is threaded. 
then bring the thread end down to the needle area. Now place your thread around this thread guide just above the needle, right here. And then to thread the needle, we're gonna use the built-in needle threader. So this is your needle threading lever. As you bring this down, pass the thread like this around this first guide and push the threader all the way down until these prongs fit around the needle. Tuck your thread into the hook that comes into the eye of the needle and continue lightly holding your thread in your right hand just lightly as you release with your left hand and you'll see a small loop in the back of the needle. Pull the loop to finish threading the needle then continue holding the thread in your left hand as you turn the hand wheel toward you to lower the needle and then bring it up again and pull the thread lightly with your left hand to bring this loop up from the bottom. This is your bobbin thread. You want to bring that thread all the way through the hole of the needle plate and now place both threads underneath the presser foot and out the back. Close the door place in the removable storage compartment. Now we're ready to test the stitch to make sure that we've threaded correctly. So let's test the stitch and make sure we've threaded correctly. With the machine set on straight stitch, with a medium stitch length setting, and your stitch width dial set to zero, place your fabric underneath the presser foot, lower the presser foot lifter, and step on the foot control to start sewing. to the end of the fabric, turn the hand wheel toward you to raise the needle until it's all the way up into its highest position and just begins to come down. Raise your presser foot lifter. Use your thread cutter to trim the thread tails. And there's our stitch. It looks good on the front and it looks good on the back, so now we know that we've threaded the machine correctly. When you sew, if you see a lot of loops on the back side of your fabric, that's actually an indication that you threaded the top of the machine incorrectly. So just remove the thread from the top thread path and re-thread the top of the machine. Now let's try sewing a seam. This is your needle plate and it has markings on it that are actually seam allowance guidelines. There are fractions in the back side and metric measurements in the front. I'm going to use a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So what I'm going to do is place my fabric under the presser foot so that the edge of the fabric follows along that 5 8 line. Lower the presser foot lifter and sew two to three stitches forward. Now press and hold the reverse lever as you sew in reverse two or three stitches. Release the reverse lever and sew forward again. When you come to the end, press and hold the reverse lever again and sew in reverse two to three stitches. Release the reverse lever and sew forward to the end of the fabric. Turn the hand wheel toward you to raise the needle up all the way until it just begins to descend. Raise the presser foot lifter and trim your threads. And here you have your seam where we have reverse stitches at the beginning and reverse stitches at the end. And what that does is it keeps our stitches secure so that as we continue working on our project, our stitches won't come undone. If you'd like more information about how to set up your machine for sewing, refer to your manual online. It's available to view or download anytime.